Hello and welcome to another run of XCOM 2 War of the Chosen. This is going to be one of our challenge runs where we're trying to beat the game with a bit of a challenge. In this case it's going to be an attempt for a world first a legendary Iron Man Army of One or Lone Wolf run. We're going to fight with only one soldier permission on the highest difficulty. There are no mods installed so it's going to be the clean base game that you could play with. The only exception is a little bit faster reload animations and uh, numeric hit point displays. So nothing that alters the game content whatsoever. For those of you who have followed uh, the legendary Iron Man Army of Two run, you will ask yourself how is that even going to be possible to attempt the game with only one soldier per, uh, per mission. And I may tell you uh, it will not be a conventional run. I, I am of the opinion that uh, anything short of two operatives per mission will not be enough to actually do the missions in a conventional way. So you're going to see me losing missions quite often. And this run here will also be a testament for those who might find dire situations and think that the aliens are going to win. Uh, please carefully note what I'm going to do in order to prevent the aliens from winning. We're trying to outscale them. And we're trying to build up a single soldier that will be a superhuman soldier, someone whom we can take into the end game and hopefully be able to run the last mission. I have not yet decided which class I'm going to take, but I do have a few strong prefer uh, preferences. However, let's see first and foremost if we're making it to the end game, because there is a very high likelihood that the aliens are simply going to overrun us. Um, before that happens. So we're going in with new game and we're playing it on legendary as advanced options. The only thing that we're doing is we're starting at the Templar HQ because we don't want the normal storyline missions. That's it. No um, uh, other second wave options. Nothing that makes the game easier or more difficult. Uh, we are definitely not going to go through the standard um, voiceover. We're enabling Iron Man and we are going to go with the normal downloadable content but we're not going to go with the lost and abandoned mission which means we're simply starting with a faction instead of uh, going with the normal um, first introduction mission for War of the Chosen. This here is to get a faster start, nothing um, in the game changes. We're still going to fight the uh, Chosen Ones and we're still going to fight against all of the enemies over time. With that being said, I know that people don't like Gatecrasher and I personally couldn't be less excited about Gamecrasher to begin with. But um, if you're starting with uh, one of the factions, Unfortunately, the only mod that allows you to skip Gatecrasher it hasn't really 100% function with that. So we will need to play through Gatecrasher and give it a try. This is the only mission where you're going to see me effectively using the entire squad. And it will probably be uh, the only mission where we have a normal squad at our disposal, simply because you can't make it a one-man mission to begin with. The change that you will see is since we were starting um, in one of uh, the locations, in this case with uh, uh, with the Templars, you're starting essentially with a Templar and three squaddies instead of four squaddies in the first mission. We're going to keep it relatively simple here. Typical strategies for Gatecrasher are stay on top of the roof, do overwatch traps and try to get a good engage onto the enemies and that's exactly what we're doing like there's not much magic happening here uh, the interesting part of the run will most likely happen once this year is over because then we're then we will need to think about who will go into the missions uh, for our team we got Renvin, we got roby and we got Dark Tower Noxus, as well as Hogbite as our potential team. So very familiar faces from the last runs.
There we go. First enemy team spotted. Gate crasher, as always, we're going to see three enemy swats. An overall amount of eight enemies. And we need to destroy the monument, which, uh, which is located here. So if they come a little bit closer, we should be good to go. Of course, they are not. We either have the chance to camp this side here or we're going on top here. I personally don't mind that much. Got three, little, uh, three nice little spots over here. One, two, and three. A hog bite will go uh, down and start killing them with melee attacks anyways. So, let's hope that they are uh, going to go, uh, come closer. Oh, there's the next pack. Pack of two. It's probably or arguably the easiest pack for us. Sectoid plus one. Again, we, want, uh, we don't want to aggro more than uh, one pack at a time. Would be good to start with three um, advent troopers. So, once they move into our direction, we can give it a go. Let me cut this one out so we're not wasting time here. I'll resume when I do have a good ambushing location. Alright, after a lengthy time of waiting, this hopefully is going to be it. So, let's overwatch and see that we can get them into direction. Oh my gosh. All right, after even a longer time of waiting, I think we finally got them in, in a position where we might be able to pull it off. So this here could be the starting point. We're going to do the typical Overwatch plus Overwatch. We're waiting with Hogbite. I don't want to use him yet. And let's start with a grenade. Solid damage to everyone, but no maximum damage, unfortunately. Let's hope that the overwatch shots are going to hit. Yep, that's one down. That's two down. And there are the promotions in terms of Hogbite. I think this should be an easy kill. In order to not immediately trigger another pack, let's go back here. And since we now lost concealment, we need to be extra careful. The explosion will probably be noticeable uh, with uh, this pack of the sectoid. Wing just a slight bit back. Everyone takes an overwatch. And I'll continue to do that a few rounds to see if we can find someone. There we go. Finally, the overwatch trap worked. And. Damn. The guys are pretty on spot. Almost killed that sector. Nice, nice. Good job. Okay, I think the only one without a kill so far is Dark Tower. Well, 
That was lamentable. Good. I'm not sure if the last pack will fall for our overwatch trap. It's probably not going to happen. But we can reload, wait a few turns, and then see if we're maybe lucky. Let me try it a few times, and then we're slowly advancing. Okay, so I tried it about 10 times. I wouldn't be surprised if they're just standing outside of uh, our vision range, which means we got to go and trigger them. Moving into full cover, they are not standing there. Well, that is surprising. Our team is moving up. Everyone goes for an overwatch and we can hear that they seem to be behind the statue. So there's a lot of uh, high ground cover for us right here. Really shouldn't be an issue. Nice little high covers, um, full cover spot there and there and there. And you know, Hogbite really can take half cover because I just need him to charge in and finish whatever is left. Over. Uh, I would like to camp this position here because it would uh, force them to move into half cover if, if we... Um, are going to trigger them they would be triggered right here kind of moving into this cover and this cover and probably alongside this wall here so let me try it a few times and see if we can fish for some overwatch trap okay so they seem to be standing right there which means we're slowly but surely advancing i don't want to take the pillar here to trigger them We're instead going around the flank and moving into their direction. See, they must be right behind this monument. Moving up. And what we could do is we could plant the C4 which would essentially force them to come closer. Yep, that's right where they are standing. So, because we can't move into these directions. That's exactly where the pack is currently standing. Of course, barely out of line of sight. Barely out of line of sight. It was predictable. So. Let's make sure that we would, uh, that we are able to hit every single one of uh, them. Trying to go for grenade kills here. We could take a, a shot at him. So Hogbite is five to six damage. We unfortunately only have 50-50 here and we can't move so might as well take the shot. Okay, it's good. Very good. Which means now we're going to soften up him. 
That'll be enough damage to get him into kill range. Wow, really? <sighs> Typical XCOM move uh, now that we have softened him up. The game basically is telling me I can't reach him unless I want to start burning. Can hog bite, throw a grenade. Yes, he can. There is a small chance that the grenade will do, deal maximum damage and kill him. Nope, it killed two civilians though. So I didn't want to take damage on Hogbite, which means we're now going to be marked and shot into full cover. Well, All right, the game is being unnecessarily cruel. Kill the Advent Officer. Yeah, I wanted to show you guys how to do a flawless gate crasher uh, mission. But there is a certain amount of RNG involved. And clearly, if the ground starts uh, burning, there is not much I can do about it. Good. That won't be a flawless one, but we have not lost any uh, soldier. Short of the very last round, everything else worked as expected. Hopefully it won't be a 30 days period until they can rejoin combat. Good, 9 days and 18. Well, the 18 sucks. Renman will miss out on the very few first missions. Renman uh, this time is going to be our specialist. Good job, man. Darktar Noxus is going to be our sniper. And Roby is going to be our assault. Found an advanced repeater. 10% chance of killing, few corpses, at least that worked out pretty well. Let me color code uh, the soldiers real quick. And we're back, uh, color coding is done. As to, in terms of research, here's the deal. I think we will be behind the curve for the majority of uh, the game. I will most likely not research weapons as fast as I would, it, uh, would do it elsewise. And instead start with armor. And, uh, the main priority, so few research goals that we should really focus on. Upgrading the gremlins. Upgrading a defense matrix. So really going straight to uh, and try to, to get it uh, is something that's important. Probably going for uh, armor upgrade. Uh, specifically grappling suits uh, come to mind. And yeah, then of course, normal weapon upgrades and so on and so forth. I am also contemplating of going and rushing uh, the Psy operatives relatively quick because I can level them up without going through missions and uh, that will be super, super helpful. So we're going for the standard uh, tech at the beginning, modular weapons, always helpful. In terms of our first building, it's going to be a resistance ring. Not even a question. 24 days, unfortunately, takes a while. In terms of engineering, we could build a few items, but none of that at the moment really matters. Don't want to waste any money there. We're going to be short on supplies as well as intel. 
So we need to really, really make it count. And since probably engineers and scientists will be short, um, I am thinking whether or not we should um, at least buy a single engineer so we can do the excavations. But for that, we need to find the black market. First and foremost, we found some supplies. Might as well move there. And yeah, they introduced the Templar class to us. Perfect. Thank you for that. Supplies certainly not uh, the best starter. I would have preferred something else. For instance, a scientist or even better, an engineer. We could go directly for magnetic weapon, but like 63 days, not going to work out. Instead, let's go for hybrid materials, which is the precursor for armor upgrades. And there is an engineer. That's exactly what we needed. So that's a really, really good uh, grab for us. And our first mission, another engineer, difficulty easy, sabotage a transmitter. Well, this is where the fun of this run is going to start, because I don't think that we can do the mission, but I'm more than willing to send someone onto the mission in order to at least try get some experience. Sabotaging a transmitter would be a perfect mission for a specialist. Unfortunately, our specialist currently is, uh, yeah, I think still in the med bay for 10 more days. So we're going to see how this is going to play out. Uh, expectation management, I will probably lose almost all of the missions in the early game. So as great as having another engineer is, uh, it's most likely not going to work out. We're going to follow up in the next episode. Thank you so much for watching. Leave your comments down below and your predictions how long it'll take for me to get completely overrun by the aliens. Take care and see you soon. Bye bye.